Hey everybody, it's uh, Mark, Dr. Deadwax, and it's time for another video. Today I am going to do a response to RLD's 130 subs contest. Uh, RLD, Richard Lee Drums. Um, Richard, first off, my heart goes out to you, okay? Now, Richard's an amazing contributor to the VC. I think he's he has uh, he has some good opinions. He has highly varied and eclectic taste in music. He he likes everything from free jazz to heavy metal. Um, uh, he used to walk his dog with Barry Alps who It's kind of cool. Uh, I think that's true. Did I just make that up? Uh, he, uh, he's he got a great channel. He puts a lot of thought into his contributions in the VC, and, and I really like that. And he always has interesting things to say, and he also, he's, he's pretty giving of himself in this video. So it, it's, it's, it's always a good watch. Um, he's done a few of my, uh, uh, like my monthly contest kind of things. He's done a few responses to those, and they've been outstanding. Um, so I'm here to do one for you, Richard. Uh, so you had two things, soundtracks that are like compilations of like singles and stuff like that. Uh, and this is hard for me because honestly, I never listen to soundtracks. There's one soundtrack I want that was... I, I I think I asked every record store I went into for like 10 years if they had it. I wanted a, the soundtrack to The Keep. Um, uh, it was by Tangerine Dream. It was this really cool kind of horror film about uh, Nazis who take over a keep and uh, get killed and terrified. It was great. I mean, you know, we all love a dead Nazi. And... Uh, Tangerine Dream did the soundtrack to it, but they never released it. Uh, apparently now it's available as a CD. Um, but, I don't know. Uh, so, I have a bunch of soundtracks here that I dug through the inbox to find, because, so, see, there's something. Soundtracks are a typical example of some, something I keep because they're interesting, but when I go to the inbox, I never take a soundtrack out. So, um, so here's some that are in the inbox, and some of them I'm not sure if they qualify. Um, this is this is one I would take out. Um, uh, Le, Les Liaisons Dangereuses. Don't, whatever. Art Blakey's Jazz Messengers with uh, Barry Wilson, Barney Willen. I believe, I'm not sure if this is a... I don't think these are songs written for the movie, but... Anyways, it's, it's a it's a French movie, uh, Dangerous Liaisons. Uh, not the one that came out in the 80s or with Susan Sarandon, I think she was in that, but like an older one. Um, so that's one, but I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure that meets your criterion. Criterion. Uh, criterion. I'm just kind of tired and rambling. Uh, Ian Fleming's Goldfinger is a score by uh, John Barry and uh, theme song sung by Shirley Bassey. So I don't know if that counts because that's a theme song. This is on United Artists. It, this movie looks kind of sexy. I mean, bare back. Sean Connery and oh, there's even a woman there without a with a bear back too. So I don't think that applies. Uh, I know this applies. Giorgio Moroder soundtrack to Midnight Express. So this struck me as kind of interesting. Uh, don't smuggle hashish out of turkey, kids. But uh, this is one I found years ago. And I, they, I used to love this movie as a kid, probably to do with the scene with like a hundred naked women rolling around on a mattress. Probably. Certainly, was for, certainly wasn't for this creepy little fucker. Uh, 
I don't know, does this count? This is, I believe these are all composed for the movie. So, this is, uh, this is just on A&M. But I know this counts, and this is a fantastic movie with great, um, with a great score. Now uh, this is The Name of the Rose. This is Sean Connery and F. Murray Abrams in, uh, uh, God, I forgot the name of the guy who wrote the book, but he wrote some amazing books. Umberto Eco. I think he wrote uh, Folk Cult's Pendulum. Wow, what a book! So, and what a set, what a score, and what a movie. Uh, so, those are my scores and soundtracks. Uh, nothing really phenomenal there. Next is a, a record that was a turning point for you. Um, this was a turning point for me. I got into Yes in grade 9. Uh, drama came out. I bought drama because the, uh, the cover was interesting. Kind of. It was, we had a store. Uh, I took a bus for like an hour and a half to get to high school. We lived in Toronto and you, well, I lived in Scarborough and you went to Catholic school for high school. You basically spent your entire life on a bus or more precisely standing on street corners in the middle of winter in Scarborough in a uniform waiting for a bus because I had to transfer three times to get to school. But one of the, just outside of my uh, school, there was a place that sold records and had pinball machines. It was like crack to me. I could not not go in there. It closed after the first years of uh, high school, after grade nine. But uh, I was in there every day. Uh, I would hemorrhage money on either vinyl or, uh, or pinball. Eventually I gave up. It was, the first thing I ever gave up in life was playing video games and arcades because I'm a chronic addict. Uh, but I bought drama there based solely on the cover. I, I didn't know what the hell was in it. And uh, brought it home and listened to it, and I liked it. You know, it's kind of cool. And uh, later I was at Zounds, and I saw this. And I, I, I enjoyed Yes, and I, I bought this, and I got it home, and this blew my mind. This was, I mean, I was listening to Pink Floyd at the time and stuff like that. And, you know, but like The Wall and animals. I uh, don't think I found Wish You Were Here yet. And that was probably the most non-mainstream music I was listening to at the time, but this was phenomenal. Three songs, one of them a whole side long, like, and highly interesting, and uh, another one that's close to the edge, this whole side. Another one, like, a very emotional song about a man for his wife and you and I. And then uh, just a, an amazing, stonking fucking rock song, uh, Siberian Catru. I mean, I think that song's close to early metal. That song is so uh, driving. Anyway, uh, so this album really kind of opened my eyes to like that there was more than just uh, the music that was on the radio. And uh, it kind of started me on that journey. I mean, a, a massive Yes fan, of, you know, all through high school and stuff like that, I was totally into them. Still like them a lot. Still, you know, nothing will ever sound as good as this record did in grade nine on a crappy Lloyd stereo with a ceramic needle. I mean, I will forever be chasing the dragon, the audiophile dragon, to recreate the sound of that piece of shit. Because that music at that time was so uh, mind expanding. Uh, you know, I recently bought a uh, a Jap of a Japanese second pressing of that, 
Not a show. Paid far too much of it, apparently. But uh, that's another point. Uh, anyway, the so that's the record that kind of changed. Uh, it was like a turning point, or um, so. That's it. That's uh, that's it. Yeah. What a still love that record. Still can't get enough of that record. Even my wife likes that record. I know. I, she hates yes, but she likes that one. Um, so every so often she'll say, "Why don't you put that on?" Especially when we're driving. So anyway, Richard, uh, I'm really glad you're part of this community. Um, I think you're a, a great addition to it. I think you bring a lot to the table. And uh, I'm really happy I was able to get this entry in on time. So, cheers. Have a great day, everybody. Keep the record spinning.